My, my, my. Simply restating that 40k will not change 30 years of established law just to suit some ideologue's political agenda sure gets people fired up these days, doesn't it? As the latest in the long line of personal attackers upon yours truly is a black library author who is too much of a quivering vulva to actually mention me or at me or anything, but hey. As the leftists are fond of reminding us all, even if you self-identify as he, him, that doesn't mean you've got a set of balls on you. Nut absentia aside, however, I will happily take this proffered opportunity to further my gatekeeping ways by demonstrating the thought process of the opposition, as here we are again official Black Library author Mike Brooks saying, quote, someone. <laughs> I am literally their Voldemort. <laughs> He's claiming that whenever a sensitive reader reacts to something in 40k literature, the company should double it, because 40k is meant to be a disturbing and uncomfortable setting, I said details. And yes, doubling and tripling down on that, 40k by design is intended to be a disturbing and uncomfortable setting. It is literally the entire point of Grim Dark, but anyways. <clears throat> Same someone made a video whining about me using Neil pronouns. <laughs> As a result, I'm doubling the queer. Hmm. So, in case you're unaware, Mike Brooks is obsessed with forcing his political garbage into 40k, of course, which is why he is now doubling down on the queer, forcing yet more of his own ideology into whatever he can, frankly. With the idea being that if you place pronouns in 40k, someone will read it and, <laughs> as the reaction was to his first book, <laughs> Lots of people will then ask questions on the forum going, Is this a goddamn typo? Z, 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 what? <laughs> because it reads like a bloody typo. <laughs> but, okay, so. There was a couple of novels. Uh, was it two or was it one? One in which a Adeptus Mechanicus tech priest decided to go with gender neutral pronouns, which on the one hand sounds vaguely reasonable, at least it's a tech priest that has already rejected most of his biological humanity, right? He's flesh, etc. Except that doesn't actually make sense either, because as Mike Brooks apparently doesn't understand, the Adeptus Mechanicus does not reject their humanity, as in being human. They are rejecting their flesh, their softness, what they perceive to be weakness and imperfections, and replacing it with the perfection of metal. This is why they do not replace their brains, because that is where their humanity, they as people, reside. Such an organization would not reject pronouns, because they are inherently human, and replacing them with something, well, Xenos and alien sounding, is not going to make you a whole lot of friends in the 41st millennium. Indeed, the likely fate of a tech adept going, hey, hey, I'm a very special snowflake, my pronouns are la 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 la, is likely to at best result in a truncheon to the phrase and a swift verbal rebuke, and at worst to be carted off as yet another defective product to be used as nothing more than fuel for the endless industrial forges of Mars. <laughs> That's before we even get into the inherently ridiculous idea of forcing something so thoroughly pointless and modern day garbagey as neo pronouns into the world of 40k. Today, when we don't actually have any real problems to worry about, we can make up our own pronouns all we want. When you're about to be invaded by Tyranid hordes, however, you tend to have more pressing concerns. But, of course, as we've gone over previously, we know exactly why people like Mike Brooks here does this. In fact, he even basically tells us in a very illuminating little tweet here. Bearing in mind Mike Brooks is an official Black Library author, which means he has an enormous muzzle placed on him. As the last time a Black Library author got a little bit too far off the reservation, GW canned his ass, so uh, 
you know, he's a bit uh, vanilla on Twitter, but this is a very telling tweet. Uh, check out guy. Sorry, just admiring your badgers. Me. Thanks. They're from she on Netflix. <laughs> Likely conversation, but details. Uh, check out guy. It's not woke, is it? Me. Exceptionally. Check out guy. I might have to give it a miss then. At which point, Mike simply just you know, picks up his groceries and goes, OK, then, and walks out of the store. But then, five minutes later, he comes up with the zinger he wish he'd had five minutes later. And to be fair, we've all had that experience. And so he went to Twitter to share it. Oh, I'm sorry if you demand your children's cartoons to be right wing, my dude. That is a very telling and interesting response because, well, you can extrapolate quite a lot from this. First and foremost, he is the kind of person who believes that if something is not expressly woke, as he says Shira is, then it must be right-wing. The idea, the thought, the heretical notion that a children's cartoon should probably be non-political doesn't even occur to him. In fact, he probably is the kind of person who thinks literally everything is political at all times, in all context. The sliding scale kind of guy who believes that things are either good or they are evil. This also lends itself very well to an idea of the greater good. I've gone over this in the gatekeeping videos as well, that a lot of the people who force their ideology into the setting they're allowed to work on do so because to them they have a greater good. In this case, it's wokeism. Wokeism is the greater good. It is placed above anything and everything else, including the hobby that he professes to love and writes books about. Hell, he even mentions, because he goes on to chill about it immediately, that he has another series of books, Godbreaker, which is apparently overtly queer. <laughs> Again, my point exactly. Even when writing his own fantasy setting where he can come up with anything, the focus nevertheless remains on who he'd like to put his pee-pee into. <laughs> oh, I mean, hey, he's free to do it in his own setting, of course. In fact, this leads brilliantly to a little bit of a segue there. I have a very big fan on Instagram, who amongst others, made this lovely comic of gatekeeping, where a brilliant, brave gatekeeper simply says, I have taken the measure of you, and I have found your intentions wanting. There's the key phrase, too. He's not criticizing this little group of heavily diverse individuals here for their skin color, or their gender, or their apparel, their body odor, or any external elements whatsoever. There is nothing about them as people that he has found objectionable and is using to exclude them from the hobby. It is their intentions he recognized to be foul and undeserving. As we can see from the group they then move on to, with one individual wearing the racial pride flag, for example, we all know what their intentions was, don't we? And hey, if the reaction to being gatekept, to being told, yeah, no, this is 40k, we, we actually would like it to remain 40k, was simply, okay, see you then. <laughs> My god, we would not have any problems at all, now would we? If they would simply go, all right, well, we'll just go play over here. Lovely. Fantastic. There are more than enough tables in the world, and we can all be at peace. But of course, that is not the reaction, as again Mike Brooks beautifully demonstrates by saying, if it ain't woke, it must be right wing. And 40k is inherently, I'm afraid, right wing. Or at the very least, it certainly is not leftist on a very fundamental level, it is incompatible with leftist ideology. And that is fine, because it's a fantasy setting. It's not trying to keep you out of anything. In fact, even if you don't like the setting, GW will sell it to you at the same exorbitant prices as it sells it to everybody else. But when it comes to the fluff, when it comes to the canon, when it comes to the realities of the setting, you are going to have to excuse us who actually like the setting for defending it, 
from becoming yet another politically focused, broken and watered down setting. And luckily for 40k, it appears that the Black Library authors got presumably a quick little sniff, a smell of Mike Brooks's tweets as his saga continues with, actually, actually, I'm sorry, I won't be doubling down on the queer. <laughs> that was, that was all just a joke. Please, please, I have no courage of my convictions. I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to. Just, just keep paying me, please. <laughs> Uh, as he goes on to write, uh, in my writing for Games Workshop, full name there so they can control F it, of course, regardless of how that would be maliciously complying with the professed wishes of someone I consider to be a stain on the hobby. Oh, Mikey Boo, you might just hurt my feelings there. But I actually think you should simply just comply with my wishes because, frankly, well, you writing stuff like this and uh, even more okay nonsense, well, it makes my job a lot easier. And he goes on at length to equivocate and try to explain why he's not a tremendous hypocrite for immediately backing down on his threats. <clears throat> Basically, my inclusion of queer characters and other marginalized groups in my writings for Black Library is not done with the intention of angering, provoking, or aggravating anyone. It's done because I think those characters should be there, and always should have been. Which is my cue to intervene- uh, hold on there, Mikey boy. Uh, if you knew a whole lot about 40k, you'd know that their characters have always been there. They have always been as you like to dehumanizingly call them, marginalized groups in 40k. There has always been people of different skin colors, black, brown, whites, and greens. There has always been groups with differing backgrounds and sexualities. Hell, there's even asexuals like the orcs in 40k. There are gender-neutral society like the Eldar who will take on female screaming banshees if somebody shows an adequate aptitude for it. And guardians, they're simply citizens' militia. Truth be told, 40k has always been a diverse setting it just hasn't been focused on because it's 40 bloody K. Whether that guardian over there wishes to put his effeminate elf peepee inside of a woman or a man is frankly pretty irrelevant because I'm trying to eat his face off with a teranid at the moment. And hey, he even makes the point pretty damn well in his last paragraph. Let me just skip over all the rest of the pointless equivocation and get to the very end. With that in mind, why not have the diversity of our current human experience on display? <clears throat> Allow me to illuminate you, my boy. Allow me to give you the truth, the answer to your question. Listen closely. Because 40k is not current year humanity. <laughs> and it really is that simple. That is why you should not put in your current year politics in 40k. Simple as. But thank you very much for giving me this excellent opportunity to demonstrate to people why you must gatekeep, gatekeep always. Because there are people in very influential positions within Black Library and Games Workshop who are actively trying to force their political nonsense into the setting. And they believe it to be a moral good, a moral absolute to do this. And they will make up any excuse they can to continue doing so. Gatekeep gatekeep always. And hey, if people like Mike Brook doesn't like that, well, in the immortal words of Games Workshop, you will not be missed. Have a good day.